Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Back with you with part three of this spirit-led teaching. Um, in the salvation of the cross is the manifold wisdom of Christ. In the salvation of the cross is the manifold wisdom of Christ, which is the mystery of faith, because it's hidden from all flesh. It's hidden from Bible-based religion. It is the manifold wisdom of Christ. It cannot even be conceived by your imagination. You have to receive it in your born-again spirit by divine revelation. The manifold wisdom of Christ is not only our spirit being saved from under the law, but the manifold wisdom of Christ, it not only saves us spiritually, but it redeems our soul from under the law and brings us in every aspect of the flesh back under the resurrection power of the spirit. The same power that raised Jesus up from the dead is the same power that raises us up spirit, soul, and body from the dead because Jesus died uh, Christ laid Jesus down for us spirit soul and body so that when we die to sin we completely die to sin spirit soul and body that way when we are resurrected we can walk and live in all the fullness of Christ which is the fullness of God we go from being church like to Christ like don't you know there's a difference between being church-like and Christ-like? Church-like people follow Jesus in the flesh. They have a Jesus mentality in the flesh, whereas Christ-like people are in Christ in the spirit, and it's evident by the fruit of the spirit. This is how you separate the chaff from the wheat. This is how you separate the children of the flesh who follow Jesus from the children of, uh, of God who are in Christ Jesus, which has... Uh, supernatural revelation attached to it. Christ being the one that carried out that eternal work in Jesus, not Jesus. Okay, because salvation is the eternal work that was carried out in Jesus. But that eternal work was not carried out by Jesus. The teachings of Jesus if you are truly following Jesus, the teachings of Jesus in the written word, which we see by sight in the flesh, pointed us to Christ, who Jesus is in his eternal state in the spirit. You see, Jesus came to save us from sin under the law. Now, the law was not sin, but the law had already judged sin to death. And we were in danger of being judged to death because of being dead in the sins and, of our sins and trespasses under the law. So Jesus, born of a woman, made under the law to redeem us that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Now, we were under the law spiritually, dead in our sins and trespasses in the spirit, and the soul was bound the soul was bound by the transgression of the spirit. Now the flesh is where, where all the sin that was coming through the soul, coming through our spirit to the soul, to the body, it was manifesting in this physical dimension. So when, when Christ was made under the law, he was made a spirit so that he would die a sinless death as a spirit. So if he came under the law as a spirit, he had to be in a soul, and he had a physical body. Of course, the physical body was uh, Jesus on the cross. But who carried out that eternal work, spirit, soul, and body, uh, who carried out that eternal work of Jesus, spirit, soul, and body, was Christ in Jesus, not Jesus. And we are the beneficiaries of that work. So Romans 3.10 says that the manifold wisdom of God must, must come to the church. It must go to the biblical church because the biblical church was given under the law. Now remember, under the law, you were saved from what you could not be saved by. Jesus born of a woman made under the law. So you were saved from Jesus because you could not be saved by Jesus. The Bible was given to us under the law. 
You were saved from the Bible because you could not be saved by the Bible. The biblical church is founded on the Bible under the law. You're saved from the biblical church because you cannot be saved by the biblical church. So uh, you're saved from what you could not be saved by. The biblical church was a shadow and type of what was to come, which is the gospel. It operated in shadows and types. I'll give you an example. For example, uh, water baptism. There's, there's still churches that are teaching today the proper way to be water baptized to be saved. And yet Galatians 3, I think it's 27 or 28. It's, it, I think it's 27. It says, for as many of us, or somewhere in that area, it says, for as many of us as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Now, did it say water? No. It says baptized into Christ have put on Christ. That's not talking about being born of the Spirit. When you're born of the Spirit, Christ sees, uh, uh, God the Father sees you in Christ. When you're baptized of the Spirit, he sees Christ through you because you have been eternally reclothed. And you have been eternally reclothed. But that's what water baptism in the flesh was pointing to the baptism of Christ in the Spirit. Now being in the dispensation of the gospel of the Spirit, we must be brought into the baptism of the Spirit, which is alone a work of the Spirit. The biblical church has neither part nor lot in that work. In that work, they're still operating in the shadow and type of true baptism, which is spiritual. Now, I'm using that as an example to show the lost state of the Bible-based church. The lost state of the Bible-based church. So the, the manifold wisdom of God must come to the biblical church. It must come to the biblical church. Don't mean they're going to receive it. Because you're dealing with some stiff-necked religious people. Don't mean they're going to receive it. You know, a lot of it is traditional. A lot of a lot, it is traditional. A lot of it is racial, and a lot of it is, is it comes down from generation to generation. You know, uh, your grandpappy and grandmama had that religion. Your your mom and daddy had that religion, and they passed it on to you. But here's the thing about it: maybe they didn't know. And don't you know God is merciful when you are serving him to the best of your knowledge, but you just don't know any better? That person, in a sense, is innocent because they're not sinning willfully. They're not sinning maliciously. They just didn't know to the best of their knowledge they were serving the Lord. But if he has sought for you to know better and you deny the light to follow tradition, you will be held accountable for denying that light. Because you're not going to stand before Mama and Papa or Mama and Daddy at judgment. You're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and you're going to have to be judged for yourself. Let us go to Romans 1, 22 and 23. Romans 1, 22, 23. 22 says... Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. 23, and turned the uncorruptible and turned the image, talking about the image of Christ, the uncorruptible God, and made it like unto the image of man and four-footed beasts and creeping things. What it was, mankind took the image of Christ in that fallen state and converted it to the image of what of that racial identity so that they had a Christ in their own image and likeness. See, th this is why when Peter looked at Jesus, he was quite prejudiced when he went and falsely confident in that prejudice when he saw Jesus. Because remember, Jesus had the sin of the world upon him. So when people looked at Jesus, they saw their own racial identity in Jesus, not knowing he was taking that racial identity to the cross for you to be crucified to it. Not only your racial identity, but everything that came with that racial identity. The religion of race, the politics of race, and the way of race, which is the culture. 
not knowing he was taking it to the cross to, uh, uh, to be crucified to it. Don't you know when you die to sin, you die to your race? Don't you know when you die to sin, you die to your blackness and your whiteness? That white Jesus and that black Jesus is a Jesus in your image and likeness, according to the deception of that racial identity, which, which we got at the fall from death. Don't you know that race is, is a doctrine that blinds you to the gospel of light and gives you, takes that racial identity and puts it in a Jesus hanging on the cross and turns the cross into a religion in the flesh, but you don't see the eternal reality of, of Christ who carried out that eternal work in Jesus in the spirit. Race is a deadly, is a deadly dangerous thing and we have to be delivered from that deception. We have to be delivered from that deception. And yet the biblical church is out, out here operating in racial unity, trying to bring together the races in the flesh, but only the gospel can deliver you from the doctrine of race in the spirit. So they're trying to bring together the races when it is the, the business of the gospel uh, living through uh myself, which is my ministry, to expose the races and where it came from. And the purpose of the races, which is for the destruction of humanity. Race is a, it, it's self-destruction. It destroys from within and it destroys without. First Corinthians 8, 1 through 3. 8. 1 1 Corinthians 8, chapter 8, verse 1 through 3. 1, it says, for we all have knowledge, knowledge puffed up. That's in the flesh. But love edifies, it builds up. That's Christ in the spirit. That's Christ in the spirit. For if any man or woman think themselves to know anything, they know nothing as they yet ought to know it. But if a man or woman love God, and you can only love him spiritually, then the same is known of him. Because you see, we love him by the same love wherewith he loves us. Through that power, we, we generate that eternal quality of love back unto him. Because we love him out of the revelation of him. We love him out of the revelation of him. If you don't have any revelation of him, it is impossible for you to love him. Because you don't know him. You can't love somebody you don't know. Second Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. True faith, not faith in Christ, but the faith, but the faith of Christ. You see, the, the biblical church is operating in faith, according to Hebrews 6 1. They're operating in faith towards God. But true salvation puts in you the faith of God, which is the Spirit of God. This physical temple becomes the house of God, and your spirit is in the kingdom of God. And when your spirit is in the kingdom of God through transformation of the mind of your spirit, he redeems the soul and makes alive the physical body by the resurrection power of the spirit. The same power that raised up Jesus from the dead. He'll raise you up likewise by that same power. So where you're living in the resurrection, you are living and experiencing the resurrection power that raised up Jesus from the dead. Second Corinthians 5, 16 and 17. 16. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yet, though we have known Christ after the flesh, I'm going to explain what that means. Yet now, henceforth, know we him no more. To know Christ after the flesh is the written word, the written teachings of Jesus. Because remember, Jesus made of a woman. Uh, born of a woman made under the law to redeem us that were under the law, which was the whole world. The written teachings of Jesus being the Bible 
pointed you to Christ. So you knew Christ according to Jesus. So you knew Christ according to the flesh, meaning according to the written word, the written teachings of Jesus. Now know we him no more. Know we him no more. Why don't we know him anymore according to the written word, the written teachings of Jesus? Here's why. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, if any man or woman be in Christ, he's a new creation. You're now going from the written word and you're now in the eternal living word. That's the one that carried out that eternal work in Jesus. But that eternal work was not carried out by Jesus. Anyone be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. That following Jesus mentality, you did that in ignorance. Now you're going from the letter to the light. You're going from the written word to the living word. You are a new creation in Christ. And now you're in the resurrection power that raised up Jesus from the dead. That same resurrection power is going to raise you up so the gospel can live through you uh, on planet earth to bring salvation to lost and dying souls, souls that are in danger of perishing. Souls that are in danger of perishing uh, through the church mentality, through the Jesus mentality. They don't have divine light. They don't have spiritual insight into what took place at the cross. But only Christ can open their eyes. Only Christ can open their eyes. The written word of Jesus pointed you to Christ. The written word of Jesus by sight in the flesh pointed you to Christ in the spirit, but the written word couldn't reveal the spirit. So whatever points you to the light but cannot reveal the light is out of darkness. That's biblical darkness. Now, always remember that the light was in Jesus, but Jesus was not the light. You see, when you come to a true revelation of the cross, it'll humble you. You see, just like the light is in me, but I am not the light. The light in me is spirit. The temple of the light, the light in me is spirit. The light is the temple of my spirit, but the flesh, my flesh is the temple of the light. This is why I walk by faith as a spirit, not by sight in the flesh. All right. You have to be able to distinguish Christ in you from you. And when you when you get discipled in the divine ability of Christ, everything opens up to you. It all becomes clear to you. You, you operate in the clarity and precision of Christ. And, and you have that eternal ability in you to open people's eyes, to see things from a perspective from which they never saw it. Because it's bad. It's bad, bad. And you have people that want to keep them church members in that dead lost state just to maintain a sense of fake control. Just to maintain a sense of fake control. That's sad, sad. Let's complete uh, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The former things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You're now operating in the newness of the resurrection of the spirit, not the onus of the letter. You ain't in your imagination see Jesus hanging on a cross. Talk about he died for my sins. Thank you, Lord, for saving a wretch like me. Now, you were, we were all wretches. We were saved from being a wretch, but he didn't save you as a wretch. You were saved from sin, but he didn't save you in sin. You see that you, you can't give proper praise with that type of, 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 of ignorance that blinds you to the light because you're not operating out of your sonship. You're operating out of a place of ignorance. John 6, 63. Here's how the written word points you to the living word. I'm going to give you an example of it. John 6, 63. Jesus it is the spirit that makes alive. The flesh profits nothing. Was Jesus flesh or spirit? Of course, Jesus was flesh. So the written word of Jesus, the Bible, pointed you away from Jesus 
all the written word pointed you away from the flesh to the spirit. You see, Jesus was pointing you to the spirit. That's him in his eternal state as the Christ. It is the spirit that makes alive. The flesh profits nothing. The flesh profits nothing. Jesus himself is saying to you, I can do nothing for you. The flesh profits nothing. He said, the words I speak unto you, that's in the first state, in the spirit. They are spirit, they are life. Well, he couldn't have been talking about himself in the flesh because Jesus was flesh. He was speaking of himself as Christ in the first state, in the spirit. This is why he says in John 5.30, of myself I can do nothing. Of myself I can do nothing. As I hear, I speak. And my judgment is just because my judgment is not mine, but him that sent me. So all the written word of Jesus in the flesh points you to Christ in the spirit. That's why when you're in Christ, you don't know Christ after the flesh anymore. You, know, you now know him by revelation of the spirit because you're in the resurrection power of the spirit. You're no longer following the written word, looking on to uh, Christ. You're now in Christ, seeing the written word from a place of light. Now you're seeing the written word through the eyes of Christ as opposed, opposed to trying to see Christ according to the written word. You see, Jesus was pointing you away from the flesh. He was pointing you away from the letter. Why was he pointing you away from the letter? For this reason, 2 Corinthians 3, 6, for we have been made able ministers of the new covenant. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. We have been made able, spiritually able ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. Why? Because the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. The letter was given under the law. Christ came to, re uh, uh, to redeem us from the law through the spirit of Jesus. Yes, Jesus had his spirit that died under the law. That's how we got delivered. Jesus, born of a woman, made under the law to deliver us that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. Have you been adopted into the family of God? Have you been delivered from under the law? We had to be delivered from the letter because we couldn't be saved by the letter. The letter. We had to be delivered from the church because we couldn't be saved by the church. We had to be delivered from Jesus because we could not be saved by Jesus. Jesus was flesh. Salvation is of Christ in the spirit. And this is what is, this is all about. A able minister is able to distinguish the flesh from the spirit and teach according thereto. And teach according thereto. Separating the soul from the spirit. Jesus in the flesh from Christ in Jesus in the spirit. The letter from the light, the written word from the living word. Jesus, uh, Christ is the living word. We find the teachings of Jesus in the written word and all the teachings of Christ in the written word pointed you to the living word, which is Christ in his eternal state. It is the spirit that makes alive. The flesh profits nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Uh, the physical temple of Jesus was where the work of the gospel was carried out. But the physical temple of Jesus did not carry out that work of the gospel. And that brings us to a conclusion of part three. Um, uh, I pray for this to be a blessing to you. I know it, it will be a blessing to you because this work is already blessed. This work is already blessed. This is the work of the Lord. I'm just the vessel. I'm the vessel through whom it's coming through. And I reap all the benefits of being the vessel of this work. But I am not this work. This is the work I was forechosen for. This is the work I was chosen, uh, forechosen for. And Facebook and YouTube is, is just the beginning of it. This is going way beyond Facebook and YouTube. 
But thank God for Facebook and YouTube. Uh, I love you and I thank you. And I'll see you in the next teachings. God bless.